Hello and welcome back to Old Windsor. Um, I came and visited this church very early on when I was super excited and had a rubbish camera. Um, but looking back through it recently, I saw enough that this place warrants a proper revisit. So good camera, good zoom, and another year's knowledge. Let's see what we can find out this time. So I'm gonna start with the ghost arch because this is what brought me here in the first place when you're searching around for places to come and look. Ghost arches are a very good clue. And we obviously have brick and bits of brick and brick and heat damaged crystallized brick. And we also have at the bottom of the arch here, you can see that it's losing its shape, losing its positioning, and the same on the other side. If you were going to put in an arch, you would put in an arch. You wouldn't put in an approximation of one. So the other things which I have um, learned and to look for since coming here the first time, uh, these things, big blocks of crystallised brick, and you'll often find them with slightly different up colour, a bit further away, and then when you look just a bit bit around it you can sometimes find lovely examples where it's actually charred and cooked brick undoubtedly heat damaged um, for big sections of this church there are little chunks of heat damaged bricks like this all over uh, the sections around the side and the back are very consistent um, now I haven't been around enough to know for certain whether it's newer or uh, it's just um, fused correctly. Um, but I'm leaning towards the second one because uh, the mortar and the aging of some of the, um, like the concrete molding, which then loses its skin and goes to this, there is a, there's examples of this right the way round. So I'm thinking probably all original, but um, God damn it's more consistently whereas long here, brick, bits of brick. Um, so here you can see it's sort of sandstoned out, fused together, hint of a brick left right next to it. And there are it's got lots of lovely examples of clearly cooked brick, cooked brick, part of the same thing. And here so you've got still brick and there it's taken on the charred colour. And a bit further down, that whole section is the charred, cooked out one. That's not flinted, that's cooked brick, as is that. So you can see you get an inconsistent flint and brick cooking damage. But not anything too out of the ordinary apart from the ghost arch and the bricks in this one. And then you come along just to this nest section and oh, this has got some in-string bits and bobs in it. Um, this is why I've come back the second time. So you can now see clearly that that was two bricks and that's fused together. We've got one very distinctly brick here. And we have ones that I pointed out the first time, brick, cooked out brick, slightly misshapen brick. But I have learned to look for nails and that has pointed me to other clues. So the green, indicates metalwork which has um, been cooked away and you never guess what there's lots of nails and there's another one with this so I found this in four or five six different churches now around nails that squared end like that sorry concentrate while I'm filming um, and often around this green uh, brown Colour. And that goes all the way up, but not so much. Um, and in the, I'm building up because what I've found, I was really hoping was what I, what I thought, and it is. I've literally just blown my mind. So we have bricks in the corners, and as I say, it's a good place to find them. You can discount them sometimes when it's to do with repairs. These are not repairs. Mortar's original, heat damaged brick, heat damaged brick. Um, you're not going to put small heat damage brick, heat damage brick, chalk, uh, flint with this brick skin. And you know, you've got see, some here, you've still got brick colour. You've got chipper brick. 
that one's flint, that one's still brick. That whole section there was brick, but that's still got brick colour. See down here, that's crystallised just about, but that's still brick colour. And along here, now along the bottoms, why? Why would you misshapen odd angles? And look at that. So that's either a split brick or that's two which are fused together, and you've got the more brick colour and the cooked out colour. So already pretty jolly interesting this wall, and then uh, here, where is it? Ah, so just chip a brick, giant flint. They do that sometimes, and I will at this point emphasise because I didn't quite get it across last time. Just how, not just jagged and sharp these are, but how facing outwards a large proportion, like there was an energy which was pushing them out. Because it's freaking dangerous. You know, if I were to slip and fall against this, I'm going to cut myself. And... <laughs> but uh, those are the risks. So let me show you what I came here for today. This. Which, in some respects, doesn't look like anything. When you know what we know, that's flint. That's flint. That's still brick. What we have here is half brick, half flint. Now the narrative says that these are a million years old and they're formed under the sea and you find them in chalk beds and blah, 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 blah. But my speculation has been that they are the correctly fused version of brick. And when you get um, churches like this, which are a random mess with bits of brick and everything else, I was really hoping to find this and look what I have found. I'm just going to get that from all manner of angles so you can tell you're absolutely certain that's not a bit of flint which has been put in with something else that is still brick and half of it's gone to flint just wow when theories find evidence uh, the rest of the church is not as exciting but it has got lots of other nails Lots of lovely examples of cooked out bricks. So I'm going to stop here and start another little chapter in a second. See you in a tick. So, main entrance. Nice big pillars. Nice big tower. My eyesight's not good enough to really make out too much at the top there. But you can see the blocks, flint, inconsistent. Uh, much as we've seen with other churches. This one has got some nice examples of chunks of brick. And we have more examples where a number of bricks are fused together and then crystallised. And we do quite often see them next to these huge flints. It's as though the energy is um, more intense than it's all going. Um, here you've got brick bubbled out. And you've got these sharp little, kind of like we see around the blocks elsewhere, but more forceful and more irregular. And it's just a into brick on the left there oh and um so this concrete molding around the door unusually has quite a distinct brick impression brick color in it those are normally so something's just um, happened there see they're all facing out sharp Okay, so here we find more brick, more bits of brick, more pointing out, and these nails, and porous coat brick. Brick, crystallised brick, nail with its material covering around. A lot of them have square end. Ooh. Ah, here we go. This was what I was hoping to find. So we have next to, oh, what are these two? Um, slated brick. Look at that. Cooked in the middle. Still brick. Yeah, there's lots of these. Lots. 
and lots of examples of this. Cooked brick, little chips of cooked brick. We have some examples where even the flint's retained its brick colour. Square with a little thing on the end, and they're everywhere. No consistent height, no consistent spacing, no consistent on all of them. I'm like, well, what, what would you have done with that? And what are you hanging from that? What are you fixing to that? I can't work it out. So something else, something original, something that we still need to fathom. Okay, it's all quite consistent on here. Just spotted, you know, just such square brick shaped flint. And, ooh, look at that one. That's lovely. Brick colour. <laughs> Somewhat repeating of the ghost arch, probably in roughly the same place. And you can see here, inconsistent as well. You've got flinting in amongst it. You've got blitz of block. And um, I'm suggesting you wouldn't build or repair it that way. Look at that. That's repair, but they have put chicks of brick in that. Perhaps just to maintain the look. <laughs> no, that is 100% heat damaged, cooked from inside brick. starting to see this quite a lot as well flint with holes and what looks like rusting so I'm thinking that either the metal's been absorbed into it or in these cases there was some left which was then you know now right there um, and there are some other nice examples of cooking let me find them for you I have done a pre-tour now I've learnt to uh, find the good stuff and then show you. Hope you appreciate my uh, steady improvement in camera skills and storytelling. How's that for a bent brick? You know, how, how? Well, we know how, but what would the narrative say? Oh, they just like putting in the occasional bent brick. There's a whole bunch of these loop things as well. There's two here I found. There's four together somewhere else. You know, the bronzing, the holes, holes and gas escaping. <laughs> Just have to find the perimeter walls on my way here. It's becoming really quite a regular occurrence now. Search, search, hey, melted perimeter walls. What are the chances? So there are just the odd little bits of brick in here. And the occasional big bits of flint which uh, come together. But it's generally all a lot more consistent. This is all a lot more what you would expect things to look like. Not so much at the top here, there appears to be alternate concrete moulding flint. I'm not sure. And you can see this. It looks, this looks like you would expect it to do it to be if you built it this way. So, is that new? Is that correctly transformed? Is that, see, I'm not sure. Definitely metal links to these flints. I 
and back to the original wall. Let's make sure I showed you everything here. So um, at the point there, transitions, no brick, brick, but that's crystallized brick. And we've got more with the coloring and we've got where it's just turned to rock. Ah, there you go. That is brick with a tiny bit of brick skin on it and the rest bubbled out. Giant flint. And tiny tips of brick. And then we are back to our lovely ghost arch. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you've uh, enjoyed our little tour. And uh, till next time, thank you. Hello, so I'm on my way to revisit the, um, the church in Old Windsor. And what do you know? We have a series of heat damaged perimeter walls on Church Road leading up to it. And we can see cooking out to vitrified. We're having bits of porcelain made. And we've got it's cooked out skin colour with bubbles of brick, bubbles, volcanicity, and what a mess. You know, is this rustic? I don't think so. Through the pillars, and you know, probably chucked a bit on top at a later date, but you know. Got gas escaping misshapen starting to fall over what do you know cooked church cooked perimeter walls it's almost as though there is rhyme and reason to this because why do I only find these in series and or in close proximity to badly heat damaged churches. I think I might be onto something for the state of these. They're so cold. Posterity. Right way over to here. And you know, not so much at the bottom, but then as you go up, making pebbles, making little brick bits, porcelain, porcelain. Just like some of my bricks at home. Just like the walls in Slough, just like the walls in Reading, just like the walls that I keep finding. Look. How cool, lovely little prep.